Have you ever played pool or maybe maybe some of you out there refer to it as billiards or snooker? I, you, Hey everybody and welcome back to Golf Test Dummy, the channel where I use my game to help your game. I've got some thoughts for you today. It's not a perfect analogy. It's not perfect. It's, it, it doesn't cover everything. But if you've ever played pool, billiards, snooker, any of that stuff, as I mentioned before, you know, you've got the cue stick and the cue ball, and then you probably hear what they refer to as English, imparting English on the cue ball. We're going to try and relate some of that to golf today, some thoughts I have. Again, it's not a perfect metaphor, it's not a perfect analogy, but it's at least got some stuff in it that I think we can apply to our golf game. All right, so in this scenario, the golf ball is gonna represent the cue ball, and I don't have a cue stick, but I did find a glue stick. It, it's gonna suffice for this, okay? Just, just, just bear with me. All right, so if you wanted to hit a stock shot, just a standard shot, not a lot of English, just your everyday run-of-the-mill shot, you would probably have the cue stick be either fairly level to the horizon or slightly descending. And where you made contact with the cue ball, you'd want that to be pretty centrally located near the equator. That would give you a pretty stock shot. It would come out and, and not have much on it. It would just react normally as it bounced around on the table off of the bumpers and the other balls that were in play. But if you wanted to increase backspin, how would you do that? Well, the first thing you would do is you would hit below the equator, right? You would want to hit a little bit below the equator, maybe lower third of the, the cue ball, and you might even add a little bit more tilt as far as the horizon's concerned with your cue stick. That way you're coming down and you're really getting this sort of deflecting blow. See, the, the glue stick is perfect because the glue stick bends, whereas the cue stick doesn't. So this was, this was by design. But anyway, as you come down and you hit the lower third of the ball and you have that more acute angle of attack, it really imparts more backspin onto the cue ball. And as it hits other pool balls, balls on the table, and other bumpers, it really has a lot more action to, to rebound and come back. It's got a lot more backspin on it. What's the opposite of backspin? It's, it's, it's topspin, right? Well, we all know that you can't get topspin on a golf ball. That doesn't actually happen. You can get less backspin, but you can't get more topspin. You can't actually get topspin on a golf ball. So in pool, you can actually get topspin, and the way you do that is to contact more of the top third, and again, you're trying to come in flat. You don't want to do it like this because then you're just basically hitting down and you're going to get some kind of a weird action because this, in relation to where this is coming in at, is the equator of the golf ball. So you angle this down, lay it flatter, and you aim more for the top third. See, again, the glue stick is trying to deflect off the top. And then that actually imparts topspin. So, like I said, this is not a perfect analogy. It doesn't equate to golf perfectly. But what can we learn from that in relation to imparting less backspin on the golf ball which is possible shallower angle of attack shallower angle of attack because all things being equal if you hit the top third above the equator of the golf ball mm, odds are you're probably going to get a thin shot you're not going to like the results and if it's cold outside you're probably going to hurt your hand but when you lay this out flatter that idea the cue actually coming into the cue ball on a much shallower angle, a much more level to the ground angle, that's when you get lower backspin, which I guess is like the poor man's version of topspin on a golf ball. Now golf club in hand and golf ball instead of cue ball. I know it looks just like the cue ball, but believe me, they're totally different. But anyway, now that you've got the golf club and you've got the golf ball, how, how do we apply that? How do we apply that? Well. The problem with a lot of golfers, most golfers, 85, I believe, percent of golfers slice. And a lot of that slice is caused by a shoulder movement that kind of that gets off plane and comes over the top and it causes them to get steep. So they're really kind of coming in steep on the golf ball, which is the equivalent of the pool cue coming in steep on the golf ball rather than coming in at a level angle. So if you're coming in steep like this and you're hitting the bottom of the golf ball, what's that doing? It's throwing more spin on it. 
it's throwing it higher in the air and it's more of a deflecting blow meaning you get higher weaker shots that tend not to roll out as much costing you a bunch of yardage but the shallower angle right trying to to come in more level with the golf ball this level attack right puts you to where the sweet spot when you add shaft lane to it the sweet spot is really coming in right at the equator of the golf ball it's actually the equator of the golf ball it is a slightly descending blow don't don't get me wrong you you don't want to be hitting up on it but it's coming in relatively level okay relatively level a very shallow angle everybody talks about getting shallow this and shallow that and shallowing out the golf club really to me the shallow that's important is at the very bottom of your swing where it's where it's touching the ground where you're really coming into the impact zone being shallow coming into the golf ball with the club to me is much more important than being shallow back here like this and then trying to rotate to get it there as long as that club coming into the impact zone is coming in at that shallow angle where the face is really kind of going like Monty Shine Bloom's uh, broom force videos that he talks about. How you bring it down, then you sweep it across. That is that level action, that low sort of sweeping action, that shallow angle of attack in the impact zone that really lessens the backspin on the ball and helps the ball to go further. With this shot, I'm going to imagine the pool cue is coming in more at this angle rather than a flat angle. I'm really, I'm really going to try and feel like I'm coming down on the ball. You know, a lot of people talk about hitting down on the ball. Eh, that's the, the, it can be a tricky, a tricky turn of phrase. I'm going to really try and, and just cut across it. There we go. Nice, nice fade. Slipped off. Felt weak. Under 150 yards. Yeah, just, just really weak. Felt deflected. Now let's try the opposite. This time, I'm really going to try and, and come down and feel like I sweep the ball and I stay low through the impact zone. Uh, this should be a straighter or even a slight draw ball flight, and it should go further. Slight draw. Well, it's carried well past 150. It's headed out to probably about 170 yards total. Yeah, 169. So really close. Uh, the the launch angle was actually a lot better on that as well. I made better contact. It was much more flush. It it felt like I I hit it much much better. All right. So two swings very different swings as far as the way that I and the club looked and very different in the results that came out. So the first one, it was a definite fade and it was actually lower. It didn't fly as high. Uh, I, I think that the reason for a lot of the high ball flights with the people that really kind of come over and, and cut across the golf ball is because then they also flip when they do it and, and it adds loft to the golf club. They, they have they don't have the forward shaft lean. They've actually got the shaft kind of, you know, pretty much perpendicular or even kicked back in some circumstances. And it really leads to some inconsistencies in the ball flight. But with the second one, it was a slight draw. It went 20 yards further without even trying. And the only thing I was trying to do was come into the impact zone and leave the impact zone through the golf ball as close and as shallow to the ground as I could, almost trying to shave like a two foot swath of grass, take a two foot long divot and, and give it a buzz cut. Just, just that little, that little difference in intentions. I am absolutely sweating out here and I have to go inside and get about four or five glasses of ice water. But if this video helped you, if taking another sport and applying it to this in any way sort of helped you to visualize things better, or maybe click the light bulb in your head and something went off and you went, Oh, Okay, aha, please leave me some comments down below. Give me a thumbs up on the video. Please let me know your, your, your thoughts on this. I would love to know if this helps you out. If you try it out on the range or the golf course, if this helps you to hit straighter shots, if this helps you to hit shots a lot more flush, and instead of those weak shots, you get something that's a little more boring and powerful. A little bit.